The truth is stranger still, because our brains are indeed teeming with alien life forms, teeming. Um, these aren't life forms that have DNA in them or anything, but they do reproduce, they mutate, they evolve, and to an astonishing extent, they shape our behavior. We have different names for them because they come in different forms. Well, images, sounds, words, combinations of words, unforgettable stories, urban legends even. And in, the, in their most sophisticated form, we call them this. We call them ideas. That movie really doesn't want to go away. That's interesting. I'm going to go back one. You just imagine that word ideas there, big and bold on the screen, <laughs> without any movie running, because I don't want to put anything else in your brain at this stage. Um, are ideas a life form, really? Well, I actually think in all the forms that matter, they truly are. I mean, think of this idea here. The idea of a wheel as an efficient way of carrying a heavy load across a smooth surface, that idea has lived in the brains of humans for thousands of years. And it really does act like a parasite. It shapes behavior. If you imagine two men in the Stone Age, one of whom's got the wheel idea infection and the other doesn't, they're trying to move a giant slab of stone. One of them's pushing and pulling and can't get anywhere. The other one, presumably just because there's this curious little pattern of neurons firing in his brain, is prompted to do something strange. He's prompted to cut down logs and turn them into rollers, and they put them under the stone, and the stone is pushed, and lo and behold, it moves. And then an amazing thing happens. In the second man's brain, there's this explosive aha moment. He's, he's been infected, and that idea will now stay with him the rest of his life. He will spread it. So there's this real sense in which um, um, ideas are like parasites, but there's many other ways in which they aren't. Most parasites don't really act in favor of the benefit of the host. Um, and ideas, with many important exceptions, actually do. It's ideas that have lifted us from just being one of the species of ape to being this planet-transforming species that, that we are. And so we actually like these things. Um, from the initial aha moment to the power that they give us to the fact that a lot of the wisest people I know believe that one of the key secrets of happiness is to give up your life to ideas that are bigger than you. And by the way, ideas are bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than us, bigger than all of us. In thousands of years' time, millions of years' time, when our species is probably gone, the beautiful and wonderful successors who have evolved from us and from our machines will still carry alive in them the idea of the wheel and of the boat and of the craft that flies through the air and of the scientific method and of the marketplace and of compassion and of justice and cooperation. These ideas, although they evolve, are immortal. And in, that, in those future history books, our role is just going to be the footnote. You know, we were the first ecosystem in which these things lived. We're the African savanna. Um, I'll actually take that. I think that's a very noble thing to do, to create this life form that's bigger and greater than we are. And, and um, uh, my organization, TED, is indeed devoted to trying to spread, trying to help ideas spread and grow and in the right way. And when you see that happen the right way, it's truly um, a beautiful thing. 